we are facing a housing crisis like we've never seen before, and now the government is getting involved. The White House just announced a new $45 billion program to help not only create more housing, but also eliminate some of the vacancies in the office market. Let me read you a couple lines from the statement by the White House. This press statement is titled that the Biden-Harris administration takes action to create more affordable housing by converting commercial properties to residential use. And if you dig deeper, what you'll see is that there is a $35 billion new lending program which developers can use at below market interest rates to convert office spaces to residential. And then there's an additional $10 billion block grant fund, which will be used for this exact same purpose to convert office to residential real estate. So what I wanna do in this video is number one, I wanna go over what this new proposal is by the government. Number two, I wanna go over what are the impacts of this. And number three, I want you to understand what might be coming in the housing market. That way you can make smarter decisions with your money. And if you stick with me until the end of this video, I got a little incentive because we have this free ebook at Briefs Media titled How to Build Wealth as an Investor. And if you stick with me until the end of this video, I will show you how you can get a copy of this ebook for free. All right, now let's start by talking about why the government created this new program. The reason why the government created this program is because we have a massive supply shortage of homes in the United States. We have a very low inventory of homes because number one, people who own their homes don't want to sell their homes. And number two, builders are being less confident in going out and building more homes, meaning builders are building less homes. The reason nobody's selling their home is because if you own a home right now and you have a two, three or 4% mortgage, maybe even a 5% mortgage, if you sold your home today and moved into a new home, well, you'd have to go and get a new 8% mortgage. And a lot of homeowners are saying, well, I don't wanna have to go and sacrifice my 4% mortgage or get an 8% mortgage, so we're just gonna stay in our home a little bit longer. So you have homeowners, not wanting to sell because they don't wanna go and get the higher mortgage. And then you have builders, builders who are less confident. And the reason why builders are less confident is because they're worried about mortgage rates. They're worried about the economy next year and the year after that. Because when a builder goes out and they build a new neighborhood or they build a new apartment complex, they have to project out 12 to 24 months because it takes time not only to build this new apartment and neighborhood or subdivision, but it also takes time to sell each one of these units. So now as they're projecting out, what is the economy gonna look like in a year or two years and what's the housing market gonna look like, there's a lot more uncertainty. And that uncertainty means less new building. And the less new building means less inventory for sale. So now, even though we've been seeing mortgage rates rise, home inventory for sale has not been rising, which means mortgage rates have been rising, prices have been staying high because the supply of homes is so low, and so now you have high home prices and high mortgage rates, which means housing affordability has been falling very quickly. This has made it very difficult for a lot of people to go out and buy a new home, and this is where now the government's coming in, and they're trying to increase the supply of homes available for sale. And the way they're trying to increase the supply of homes available for sale is by incentivizing developers, incentivizing builders to go out and build new apartment complexes and new condos. How are they doing that? They're not talking about in this proposal, building new subdivisions and neighborhoods in the suburbs. It's by taking office spaces that are vacant and incentivizing them through subsidized mortgages lower interest rate loans and grants to go get this money and go out and convert these office spaces to residential. Now, why does this matter? Because it is expensive to convert an office building or office space to residential. And the reason why is because sometimes office spaces have weird layouts. And when you have a residential home, well, you gotta have places for your plumbing and places for your electrical and places to have sleeping area and living areas. So it's a very different layout. So sometimes it can be very expensive to convert an office space to a residential space. And sometimes, well, it's just not financially feasible to now spend all this money to convert an office space to a residential space. And so if you had to do it as an investor, well, maybe it wouldn't make any sense. But now if the government is giving you free money or cheap money to go out and do this, now it can become much more attractive. So on one hand, it's a way to incentivize developers and builders to now go out get this free or cheap money to go out and start building and convert this into residential. That way there's more homes available for sale. But there's a little hidden factor here that you want to understand as well. And the hidden factor is, well, let's call it the $1.5 trillion looming problem in the commercial real estate market. And what that problem is, is that we have a lot, about a trillion and a half dollars of commercial real estate debt that is coming due. 
What that means is in the commercial real estate market, you don't have 30 year fixed rate mortgages. If you went out and you bought an office building today, generally what's gonna happen is you're gonna get something like a five year adjustable rate mortgage, meaning you're gonna get a loan for five years and then after five years, the interest rate's gonna readjust. Well, what we've seen happen is that over the last number of years when interest rates were very low, you saw a lot of people go out and start investing in real estate. One of those places was office real estate. And so now if you own office properties and you got a refinance in 2020 or 2021 where mortgage rates are very low, like what everybody else did, well, that means 2024 and 2025, you're gonna see your loan potentially come due or your refinance coming due. That means the readjustment could be coming. And if the readjustment is coming, that means now if your mortgage rate is significantly higher, your payments could also shoot up. So now people might be going from this two to 3% mortgage to seven, eight, 9% mortgage in 2024 and 2025. There's about one and a half trillion dollars worth of commercial real estate debt that is expected to come due by the end of 2025. So now the question is, if these payments come due and now all these landlords have to pay more money, can they continue paying the higher payments? And generally what would happen in the past in a normal market is, sure, you pass the cost down to your tenants. You raise the rents for your tenants. But when you are in a market where offices are still vacant in a lot of instances across the country, you're still seeing high office vacancies, well, that starts to pose a different problem because that means you're already not generating enough revenue as it is. And now if your expenses start to rise even higher, that makes it even more difficult now for you to continue refinancing or making your payments because now your payments are higher, but you're not having any revenue come in the door as it is. So you can start to see now the government is starting to get worried about this future commercial real estate issue potentially coming in the coming two years because, well, now they're trying to reduce some of this office vacancy. How are they reducing some of this office vacancy? By telling developers to convert some of this office space to residential. Now, of course, we have about a trillion and a half dollars of commercial real estate debt coming due in the next couple of years. Not all of this is office. And now we have this $45 billion program to help developers and incentivize developers and builders to convert some of this office space to residential. There's a big gap between one and a half trillion and $45 billion. But this is where you want to understand that there's a lot of issues that are kind of brewing, especially in the commercial real estate market. And as we start to see what happens with interest rates in 2024 and 2025, well, that's going to kind of indicate what might happen, especially in the commercial real estate market, because a lot of people are saying 2024 is an election year. President Biden wants to win the election again. One of the things that could help him win the election is if interest rates potentially fall, which means you could see some political pressure by the government to push the Federal Reserve Bank to start cutting interest rates. Now, the Federal Reserve Bank is a separate and independent entity from the government, or at least it's supposed to be. However, what we've seen happen is sometimes there are political pressures and political games that can be played where people in power want to win again and they can put pressure on the Federal Reserve Bank to make certain decisions to influence the economy to potentially help the presidency because when people feel like they're rich, when people feel like they're making money, when people feel like the economy is good, they feel strong and happy about what's happening in government. When they're not happy with their money or their wealth or the economy, they want to see change in the government. Doesn't matter who's in office, Republican, Democrat, it's always the same kind of concept with that. And this is why some people are saying that in 2024, we can expect to see more interest rates cuts. Now, do we know for sure what's gonna happen? No, absolutely not. But this is where I want you to understand kind of how the system works and understand also if interest rates start to get cut in 2024, that can also make the inflation problem worse because we haven't solved the inflation problem yet. And this is where, while a lot of people are predicting what's gonna happen, I don't want you to be in the game of trying to predict what's gonna happen next year, but rather understand how the economic system works, understand how money works, understand how interest rates play a part in the economy because at the end of the day, there's a lot of red flags out there not just the commercial real estate market, not just inflation, but in many different aspects of our economy. And these things then create opportunities for those who are financially educated, for those who understand money, for those who are prepared. Prepared meaning you have some money put aside, which means you don't use 2023 as the year to go out and finance a new truck. Even though we are seeing truck prices finally start to come down, use truck prices, but you use 2023 or whatever's left of 2023 as the year to get financially smart 
to build a financial preparedness, to build a financial cushion, to understand what's happening. That way you can capitalize on whatever opportunities might be coming your way. But this is where it's important for you to start building that financial education. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, if you want to get a copy of this free ebook, How to Build Wealth as an Investor, you can do so. The way you can get a copy of this ebook is by clicking the link down in the description below or by going to briefs that co slash ebook. This is an ebook that walks you through the basics of how do you build the mindset of an investor, to how do you save your first couple thousand dollars, to then how do you start investing your money? What are different investing strategies? How do you start investing for cash flow? And then it goes into things like how do you spend your money smartly? And then it goes into things like how do you earn more money smartly? And then it goes into things like how do you protect your assets? There is a ton of value in this ebook and you can read this ebook for free. So you want to get this ebook, I've got the link for you down in the description. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Read this title from Fortune Magazine. The US housing market has gotten so expensive that incomes would have to jump 55% to make buying a home affordable. America is currently experiencing one of the least affordable housing markets of all time. Now, there are three things that could happen to make housing more affordable. Either incomes could rise dramatically.